Yo, what is up guys? Joker here bringing you another video for Pal World. So you've probably seen uh, these videos on YouTube, right? Uh, how to make fusions like the most powerful creatures in the game, right? And how there's like specifically lot, some creatures are specifically locked behind breeding as well as it's going to be how you get um how you pretty much min max all of your pals with the best traits right the main thing that you're going to need for breeding is going to be cakes um all of these videos kind of go over how you that you need cakes but and, and like super briefly how you can get them but none of them are like really how to set up a cake farm for breeding because in my opinion you're gonna want to have a cake farm as at least one of your bases especially if you plan on doing any large amount of breeding right because cakes in my opinion are the most annoying thing in this game they're the only thing that has bugged the shit out of me because not only are they extremely slow to cook they require five separate ingredients four of the ingredients you can buy but in my opinion it's a waste of gold the fifth one is a um drop that you either have to get a creature for or go farm in the open world and i'm going to explain that here in a second but let's go over the five ingredients that you're going to need for cakes you're going to need red berries you're going to need honey you're going to need milk you're going to need eggs and you're going to need flour flour comes from wheat right so getting the easiest ones out of the way a red berry plot like i mentioned in my vixie video you literally only need one red berry plot one planter and one water and you go infinite on red berries next thing is going to be wheat right this is going to be a higher level thing uh when do you unlock a wheat field level 15 right so as a bare minimum you have to be level 15 to be able to even make a, a wheat field um once again you can buy the materials but if you're under level 15 i don't i don't suggest you trying to farm cakes right because the last ingredient that you're going to need is going to be a pain in the ass right so you are able to go ahead and buy the honey the milk the eggs and the wheat you can buy all of these from a merchant over here in this small settlement right next to King Paca, right? And honestly, in my opinion, it's a waste of gold, right? You, you, gold is easy to come and buy, especially in mid and late game, but it's, it, it's still a waste, dude. It's much easier to go ahead and just set up a farm. That way you're just able to passively stack these up while you're playing the game as opposed to having to go out of your way every time you want to do a breeding session, right? Now, let's go over the required creatures that you're going to need for these. these this, this is non-negotiable. You are going to have to have chickpeas. These can be found in the entry area, um, literally almost everywhere around spawn. Like if we go ahead and pull up the pal deck and click chickpea habitat, it's literally everywhere almost everywhere in the map right so that's not a hard requirement the muzzerini are a little bit harder uh they're going to be in a level 20 to 25 zone they're over here near aesthetic falls if i go ahead and i open up my pal deck once i click them uh there we go muzzerini right so they're in a level 20 to 25 zone how do i know it's a level 25 to 25 zone this is a level 23 boss. This is a level 30 boss. So that's why I'm calling it a level 25 zone, right? They are only like level 10 when you capture them. So it's not really a level 25 zone, but there are some higher level things over there, right? And then B guards. B guards are going to be found around this continent, that uh, continent. Well, I guess it would be a continent. Is it connected? uh oh well it's near this top area right and there is going to primarily be a couple of spawns that i'm i was able to find super easy so 
from the um sealed uh the sealed room of the swift uh i'm just a little bit west southwest of that right there's a spawn over there there's a spawn over there and then there's a spawn over here usually one of these three spawns is going to have b guards in it if not you can just make a small circle and you'll find them relatively easy out of the three creatures the b guards are by far the most annoying thing to capture and most people choose to just farm them by shooting them once and running away because they have a kamikaze attack where they will blow up i found a way to mitigate this by having a reptaro you sit on him and you use his volcanic fissure i think it's called a volcanic burst right and it pretty much brings them down to 10 percent because they're weak to it sometimes it one shots them but if you have a lower level reptaro it's going to be perfectly fine the reason why this works is because this guy has so much defense that while you're on him if these things explode it doesn't quite one shot you like it brings you super close to dying or I just got super lucky. But while I was riding him, I was not getting one shot by their kamikaze explosions. So I was able to go ahead and just sit on top of him and throw pal spheres at them. Right. So those are going to be the three require uh, their three required pals. Technically, Everything else is pseudo interchangeable. It would just significantly slow it down, right? Let's go over the pals that I chose to use and what you can use as a replacement, right? So we have one of my favorite pals, Masanda, and he's just good at a ton of stuff, right? He will craft for me, he will plant seeds for me, and he will transport stuff for me. Plus, he's decently strong in case my base gets invaded or there's a base raid going on. These things help me so much, right? So they're just overall really good. Once again, you find them around this same area super commonly. Now, if we want to downgrade these, we would probably swap them to tansies because they have essentially the same skill set right uh except for they have a weaker vor version of it where the masanda has level three transport and level two planting these tansies have level one planting and level one transport there may be a middle ground i don't know if there's a creature that has level two transport and level two planting if there is, I don't think I've found it. Um, and I'm literally at 90 out of 110, right? Uh, if we go ahead and open my pal deck, I'm at 90 out of the 110 creatures and I've caught 86 of them. So like if it exists, I, I guess I just haven't found it yet. So the downgrade of the Moss Anda is going to be Tansy. I wouldn't hundred percent recommend it because it's just gonna slow it down significantly maybe if you have a tansy that you've condensed a lot that's like a two or three star tansy uh maybe but i don't think that'll actually make that much of a difference will it no no it won't never mind yeah it's just purely a downgrade right uh so it would slow it down significantly so once again quick recap requirement found in the entry zone requirement found in a level 20 zone requirement found in more of a level 30 zone and then with the moss andas they're used mainly for planting seeds and carrying stuff same thing with these cinemas they're literally just here to make sure that i have a full uptime on my crop plots right because the moss andas are going to be doing a lot for me mainly transporting everything from my three ranches into my chest right so i needed something to make sure i have 100 percent uptime that's where i teched in the cinemas once again 
you can change these with anything. You can even put life monks in. You just want something that potentially has the ability of the transport and the planting, right? These have, once again, a tier two planting. That's why I'm using them because they're more efficient at planting shit. Now, we also have a Verdash, which is a level 30 boss right here. Or is he level 35? Uh, can we... He is level 35, but he is also really good because he has that pseudo jack of all trades, right? He has the planting, he has the transport, and he has gathering. Well, I guess he doesn't need gathering, but he has tier two transport and tier two planting. Um, and you can use anything that has transport and planting. The main point of this is to make sure you have 100% uptime on your crop plots as well as as many of the items on the ground are making it to the chest as possible. Now, these next two things are not requirements but are highly, highly, highly recommended. And that is going to be the Bond Cherry Aqua because it has tier three watering. I'll go ahead and demonstrate what how effective this is. So let's go ahead and throw the wheat down. And then as soon as he's done watering over there, he's gonna run over here and start making this flower for me. And the other is going to be the Reptaro for multiple reasons, right? Once again, he's super helpful for capturing the bee guards because he helps you tank the explosions because not only is he super effective against them, so he's able to bring them down to low HP super effectively. Um, he's super tanky and he helps you tank the explosion, right? So just overall really good. On top of that, he has tier three kindling and making cakes is by far one of the slowest things in the game, right? This is with a tier three kindling pal, and look how slow that's going. You can technically swap these out for like a uh, Pen King and uh, what is it, an Artox, uh, which have level two watering and level two kindling respectively. Or, I mean, I guess there's a, I think there's a bunch of creatures that have, yeah. You can use serpents as well for level two watering. Um, honestly, not requirements, but they speed up the process significantly. You're going to find the Bond Cherry Aqua over here by where you find the cows anyways. So you might as well just capture it. And then the Reptaro is going to be over here on this magma island. You are going to need heat resistant armor to be able to even survive over there because it's like majorly lava, right? So there's that. Uh, and those are pretty much the non-required but highly suggested because they're very good pals. Like I said, you can replace these all with lower level pals, but these top eight are required. Technically, it would be top nine. I was just too lazy to grab another cow, right? Um, and that's because you get the eggs, the milk, and the honey, which is three of the five requirements. The other two come from crop plots. And like I've been mentioning, as I've been monologuing, we just continue to increase this. You don't have to worry about them burning through your supplies, right? You can set it up something like this, where they'll go ahead and they'll eat red berries and eggs first, just because you're going to sustain on those so easily that it's not even a problem. And then you can see the speed of how quick the tier threes are actually able to make stuff, right? So that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And then you're able to go ahead and go do whatever you want. Every now and then, come back. Every time you're going to be doing a breeding session, come back and grab all the cakes that you made because it is one cake per one breeding attempt. And it's... It's super hard to sustain unless you have a farm, right? Once again, like I mentioned, you can buy four of the five materials and just farm the bee guards, but I I would much uh, I I would really uh, recommend you just biting the bullet and taming three of them as opposed to farming them, right? Because if we just look at this, two hundred and forty-five honey. 
they drop like three honey per bee guard. So you would literally have to run around the island hundreds of times. I'm not even being sarcastic to get the amount of honey that I've used. So like just just bite the bullet, capture him, get a Reptaro so you can tank the explosion. He's super effective. It makes taming him super easy, right? Uh, I believe I went over the entirety of the farm and what was interchangeable. So I hope that does help. I don't want to make this video any longer. It's already at 15 minutes. But after seeing all of these breeding videos and how none of them really went over how to set up a cake farm, they go over briefly like how to get cake but none, none of them go over like how to effectively set up a cake farm. And because you're going to be wanting multiple attempts, you're going to want more than three, four cakes, right? You're going to want a lot of cakes. That way, when you want to start breeding, you're not bottlenecked by cakes. Because as you can see, these are extremely slow. If I was using an Artox instead of the Reptaro, I would probably have like a third of the progress right that that's how big of a difference it is from kindling two to kindling three now he's by no means um like maxed out right like i could breed for a better reptaro that has like more efficiency with working with the um amount of cakes i have i could get like more effective pals but i'm not doing that right now i'm just getting some cakes because i need to finish my pal deck and a decent bit of the pals that i'm missing are fusions right so that's pretty much that. Like I said, I don't want to make this video any longer. So we're going to end it here. 17 minutes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if this helped you at all. And until next time, take care.